welcome to another uh, tutorial for DIY video guide and in this one we're going to talk about how to make high quality Skype interview recordings. So Skype is really good for audio interviews. You can have both people talking to each other and then you can have people record it separately on each side so you don't have any lower quality issues with the audio or whatever. But the biggest problem with doing video over Skype is bandwidth. So if someone's shooting on an HD webcam that's built into their monitor or laptop, or they have a separate one like a Logitech C920, which is what I use now. If they have something like that, it's pushing 1080p, 720p HD video over the internet. And then the person on the other side is trying to not only view it, but then record it on their computer. And it just doesn't work very well, to be honest. So if you look at a lot of the interviews inside DIY Video Guide, a lot of those recordings are just directly using the exact same way I'm going to show you now. And you can tell that if you're on like a laptop or something and you're not on a beefy high-end computer, the recording isn't going to turn out that well. Or if you're just over Wi-Fi or you're in a spotty connection area like a Starbucks or something, or you're sharing internet with a bunch of people, it's not going to turn out very well. So I'm going to show you the way to get uh, low quality Skype video interviews and then I'm going to talk a little bit about how to get the higher quality ones um, at least on your end if not on both people's sides of the conversation. So the first thing I'm going to show you is what I use and it's called Ecamm Call Recorder. It's a Mac um, app that connects with Skype and it's about $30 here you can see and what it does is it records a little audio or video file on your computer while you're using Skype. So while you're talking to the person, while you're you know, doing your interview or whatever, you can set it to record audio only um, or video and audio. And instead of having to you know, have people have separate cameras on both sides and different audio and stuff, this is the quickest way to do a face-to-face, one-on-one or even multiple people sometimes interviews for audio and then it's the quickest way to do a one-on-one -on -one video interview over Skype. So this is the app that I use, Ecamm Call Recorder. Uh, another great one is called Pamela for, for, for Windows. So check both of those out. They're not very expensive. Um, Pamela comes with a 30-day free trial. I think Ecamm comes with a trial too. Um, I don't know how long. I think what they do is they limit the, the recording time that you can do using Ecamm Call Recorder. So let's see what this actually looks like in action. So over here, Drew is my friend that I record a nerd podcast with occasionally. Um, we had a call today. And so this is Ecamm Call Recorder here. It's just this little thing that pops up when you're using Skype. So let me jump into the settings for this. And so here are the settings that you get for Ecamm Call Recorder. You can always check for updates and then you have audio encoding. So I always do uncompressed because I want the best quality audio that I can get during this Skype recording. The two types of compression will have smaller file sizes, but you won't have the best audio that you can possibly have. So I always go with uncompressed. If you do go with some of these other compressions, you can change the audio quality and stuff. If hard drive is, space is an issue, then maybe you'd want to change these, but I just leave them how they are at uncompressed. Then down here, they have recording options. And since uh, nerd cred, the podcast I do with Drew is only audio based. I didn't need to record video for it, but for all the interviews that I did for this guide and everything, I wanted the video of both sides for some of them. And when I shot with the DSLR, I wanted both sides just in case the DSLR wasn't working or something. So you can do audio only, you record just your side. Um, this would be a great example for someone else that has Ecamm Call Recorder and you're doing a video interview and they just want your side before it gets uploaded to the internet, the speeds all influence it and stuff like that. So this would be just an example of, okay, I just wanna record my side because this person that is interviewing me is asking for it. Remote only would be if you were shooting or looking into like a DSLR like I am now or like I did in a couple of the interviews for this guide. You wouldn't really need your side because you're not looking into that webcam. Sometimes it's like low and off to the side and you know, you're not even gonna need it. So you could just record uh, the other side 
of the conversation. And theoretically, you should drop less frames and it should be a little bit higher video quality because your computer's not having to record your end too. Split screen, and this is one you've probably seen before if you've watched something on YouTube where you just have two talking heads, they're in like a square window and they're just there the whole time. It's just back and forth, back and forth. Um, but there's no like transition between the two people talking. So this actually is the fastest way to get a video interview done because if you record this way, you get one video file that has both the talking heads in there, the audio is already built in, it's ready to ship. You could basically upload it to YouTube and a lot of people just do it that way. If you want a little bit better quality, you can go to multi-track advanced. And what this does is it creates separate video tracks for each participant within the QuickTime movie. So you get this video file that is twice as wide because it has both full uh, resolution, which we'll talk about in a second, full resolution video for those people. Um, and I could, I could pull one up, but basically what it is, is you just get these, instead of having like a regular widescreen, it's like two like taped together. And then with this program, you get a few other apps. Um, they have movie tools basically that you can convert uh, things into MP3. You can split those two video files that are currently stuck together into separate files. You can also separate the audio from them, which ends up giving you four different files. So the video from one side, the video from the other side, the audio from one side, audio from the other side. So like this gets more complicated, but you can get better quality video from these to do your Skype video interviews. So up here now, you got some more video options once you turned on video. Video encoding, I always do H.264 because that's what you're gonna be uploading to the web anyway, typically. So I just record in that format already. And then video image size. This is another thing that is really important because depending on how fast your computer is, it's gonna impact how high of resolution you can use when you're recording these things. So what I did for, um, I wanna say it's the Chris Ducker interview. I tried to do 720 wide, which is basically 720p. And my computer was chugging and it, I got a little pop-up while I was doing the interview that said, you know, there's frames being dropped in this recording. And so if you watch that interview, especially cause Chris is over in the Philippines, so our internet connection isn't the greatest. Um, it might look a little better because it's at 720p, but you're dropping frames and the audio typically, when, whenever you're dropping frames, stays, stays consistent. But the higher resolution you do video recording, the faster computer you need to actually render that in real time and record both sides. So for the next few that I did, um, like Sarah Peck is one example, I still wanted widescreen. I still wanted to eventually, you know, have it at 720p when I rendered it and edited it in the in the program to match up with the intros and outros and stuff like that. So I did this, which is, you know, 480 pixels tall and 854 wide. And if you do this one, 640 by 480, it's the same height, but it's it's square instead of widescreen. So it's four by three, like an old school TV versus 16 by nine ratio, like a widescreen TV um, aspect ratio. You can go all the way down. I don't know why you'd ever want to record a video that's about this small, but you can do that if you really want to. So the next few settings, um, show recording indicator on video. I never have this checked. I don't want a little red dot saying, <laughs> this was being recorded when I then later export it and, and have it online or whatever. I don't want a little red dot in the corner of my screen. So that one I just always leave unchecked. The next one, show recording controls at launch, I always leave on because if I know that I'm gonna record a call, it'll pop up, it'll remind me, oh yeah, I should check the settings, make sure that I have it set to just audio or audio and video and stuff like that. If you don't have that checked, you might forget to change to the correct settings. You might have it set to audio only and think you're on video recording. And so I always just leave it open at launch and just always have it there. The next thing I do is keep recording controls in front during calls. So if I'm on a call, it'll, instead of like get hidden behind a window if I'm doing stuff, 
and then maybe it'll stop recording and you don't know, or maybe your input levels are way too high or what have you, it's better to leave these controls over top so you can always see them, you can stop it if you if you guys finish and you're then just BSing about whatever topic, you can stop it and save some file space for you and having to look at it later. Next thing I do is I do record all calls automatically because I would rather have more files on my computer than to have forgotten to push record on an important interview or something like that that I was trying to do. So I always do record calls automatically and since you have the controls in the front during the call, you can then stop it if it's like, I don't know, just like a family call or you don't want to record it or what have you. So I just hit stop right at the beginning. And then I usually have this on. I'm not sure why it's unchecked, to be honest. Um, you can discard calls shorter than 30 seconds. So if I have this checked and I have record calls automatically and I get on a call with my mom on Skype or something, we start talking for a little bit and like, 15, 20 seconds in, I'm like, oh, why is this recording? It's just my mom. I don't need to post this conversation on the internet. I'll stop the recording and it'll just discard the call. There'll be no file on my computer that I have to go and delete later. So that's a handy thing to use. I think that I actually have it off because, I mean, even if I get disconnected and reconnected a few times in like a group call that we're all recording, um, I want to have as much of that as I possibly can just in case I need it and then record voicemail playback automatically. That would be if you, if you use Skype and get a lot of voicemails and you'd want to, I don't know, then just turn those voicemails into MP3s. Maybe you run a podcast and you have people call you on Skype, leave a voicemail, and that's how you get questions for your podcast or something. You could then just turn these into um, audio or files or whatever that you could then use in your podcast. So. That pretty much wraps up this whole page. And the last thing there is just uh, where you want to save your recording. So I have a movie folder on my Mac that then has a folder called Saved Calls. All of these go in there and I just manage them and do the exporting and uh, configuring a little bit different um, for each of those. So that is the fastest way, um, but the lower quality way to get Skype interviews recorded. The next best thing is to have your Skype call maybe record the audio or record the video just in case, but then to have a separate camera set up on each side of the conversation. So if you look at the Sean Ogle interview, the Corbett Barr interview, or the Nathan Berry interviews in this guide and in this, in this course, you'll see that on my side, I'm recording into a DSLR. So it looks way better, way better, way better than anything you're gonna get out of a webcam. So the problem is then you have to sync up that footage later. It's more work. Uh, my brother-in-law that's helping me edit these uh, videos, it took him more time to get those files set up, but then doing the actual editing and going back and forth between the two sides isn't that much more work. So that's the best way to get high quality Skype interviews. You can record the audio on both sides and do the video if you want to get it or have each side separately recorded and then sync them later with the recording that you got from Ecamm Call Recorder or from Pamela. So hope that answered any of your questions you had about recording over Skype. Let me know if they didn't and uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial.